Kevin, you guys have won for about three weeks straight now. Almost. What do you think is clicking the most out of everything that you guys have been doing on both ends of the floor? Uh, I think we've been struggling even though we've been winning. Um, we got some injury breaks in this run as well. Uh, but I also like how <clears throat> we fought through a lot of different things in this run. Uh, we shot the ball well uh, from the three-point line. Um, you know, I think we moved the basketball really well as, you know, throughout this run. But uh, we need to play better. Um, I, I, be I believe that coaches, the coaches and all my teammates think the same thing. Uh, I just don't want to get too complacent with us winning. You know, we got a long ways to go. Katie, what did you like about the, the first quarter, the intensity level and so forth, and then again in the, in the fourth quarter when it came to winning time? Uh, I like that we ended that quarter um, outscoring them 25 to 14. 14 points in the first is uh, phenomenal defense for us, and that set the tone. And, um, you know, obviously teams make a run. They have 40 points in the third. Um, but the first and fourth, our defense were our defense was, uh, was phenomenal, and uh, we're going to need that going forward. Kevin, to your earlier point about the want for the team to get better in different areas, even with the winning, what, what are the things that jump out to you the most? Uh, you know, I like that. Uh, I think that we should, we could start off with a little bit more intensity on the defensive side of the ball. You know, I think we got to get some plays down, um, some actions that have been hurting us a bit on the defensive side and rebounding. Um, we got all come in and rebound. I had two rebounds tonight. I'm 6'9". I can't do that if we want to win. So we got to do a better job of rebounding and, and uh, you know, talking out, communicate, communicating on the defensive side of the ball on certain actions. Just kind of random, but you guys were wearing a shirt tonight with that Baron Davis dunk on it. Uh, do you remember that dunk? I mean, you would have been, what, probably like 18 or something? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was the summer before I, uh, summer I got drafted, right before I got drafted, actually. And that, to see the energy in that building through the TV was phenomenal and <clears throat> That was uh, such a huge upset that, you know, everybody was in front of the TV everywhere I went watching those games. And Baron Davis, you know, that play is going to be remembered here in the Bay Area forever. Was that almost like an introduction to you, to the Warriors? I mean, they were kind of so bad for like the decade before that. Mm, no, I've been an NBA fan for a long time before then, but um, they had some goons on that team that I really enjoyed from Baron Davis to Matt Barnes to Steven Jackson to Beedrins to... Al Harrington, they had some good players on that team. And uh, so I watched them a lot. But, you know, that play, Baron Davis was kind of the, the head of the snake here. Uh, right in front. Uh, Steve said that uh, DeMarcus will not be making the trip to Portland for the back to back. So really? That, yeah, so this will be his last game before the All Star break. And I'm wondering if you take a minute to take stock, how do you think that progress has gone for the starting lineup, incorporating him? Um, and what do you guys? What do you think you guys still need to do to make that even better? I think we're still figuring out how we're going to play and be effective with each other on the offensive side, like where our shots are going to come from. Um, you know, and I think that we are, you know, doing a good job of, you know, mixing up the the shots and the touches, and you know, everybody's getting involved. Um, I think I think Cuz is still getting his legs up under him. Uh, you know, he's. Definitely been a load in the paint for us, but it's going to be a time where you're going to start knocking down those threes. They look great leaving his hand, but they're just a little short. Uh, you know, but I think after the, after the break, you know, he relaxed a little bit, figure out where, he, where he's at as a player. I think he's going to come back uh, even better afterwards. Um, Steve said that um, Draymond is always in the Defensive Player of the Year conversation based on his you know, defensive uh, prowess over the last few games. Would you say he's played his way into that conversation this year? He's always in a conversation. I mean, when you start off with guys, it's always going to be Draymond, Rudy Gobert. Those are the top two guys you start with. Then you just figure it out as the season goes on after that. But he's never out of the race um, because that's just what his game is. That's who he is. But, you know, hopefully people start to take notice. You know, unless you're getting steals and blocks, people don't really realize what you do on defense, you know, until you watch a full game, you know. People don't want to watch full games no more. They just want to look at the stats. So, you know, and uh, if you watch Draymond play, you'll understand what he brings.